Take the Night is a new crime drama that follows two rivaling brothers who must set aside their differences and their beef to take down a motley crew of criminals who botched a prank kidnapping and stole a family heirloom. This film is so bad and poorly executed that I have compiled 13 reasons where I think this film went wrong. Let's jump right in. Number one, Seth McTee. He co-wrote the screenplay, leads the cast, co-produced this film and directed it. This is his first feature film credit. He was too involved in this project and needed some distance from it to understand what works and what doesn't. That's one. Number two, the story meanders. There's a subplot surrounding one of the anti-heroes, which was more compelling than the main plot and the main characters. He's a former basketball star who's food insecure and robbing as a means to eat. That was more compelling than a jealous brother or rivaling brothers hiring the wrong criminals to kidnap the other brother for a sick prank. Number three, the pacing. It's belabored and so incremental to the point that the viewer is inundated with unnecessary information which doesn't move the story along. Um, it takes 36 minutes to get to the inciting incident, the actual abduction. Even though the first few scenes hint at it, the next 30 minutes are wasted only to double back and explain what was going on in that first scene. That's lazy writing. Number four, the performances were weak, unfortunately. The actors stare aimlessly as if they're reaching for their lines. It was so noticeable. Number five, the dialogue. The dialogue is amateurish and dated, kind of stale even. Lines are redundant, reiterating action that is already descriptive enough. Over explaining conveys that the writer doesn't trust the audience or the viewer or even the reader of the screenplay to understand what's happening on screen. And number six, the stunts. The stunts are sloppy, and not just the choreography, but the editing of the stunts are blunt and choppy. Speaking of editing, number seven, editing. Some scenes are too short and break abruptly. Other scenes are too long and float like segments. Number eight, cinematography. The camera gets shaky, not like steady cam shaky like uncontrollably shaky in dialogue heavy scenes. So characters can be having a conversation and the camera is shaking. Um, the camera also lands on characters and lingers even though they aren't the subject of the scene or the subject of that moment. And the camera also catches objects that are irrelevant to the story as if it's drifting off into nothingness. Number nine, the characters. The characters are flat and one dimensional and there are too many of them to follow. The secondary characters um, you get backstory for them and their backstory is cheapened by flashing back to their respective childhoods. This doesn't move the story. I don't think we needed to know why all of them are after this heirloom or after or wanting to rob 
of these brothers. We don't need motivation or we don't have to see all their motivation or a trauma from the child, their childhood. And we learn more about the past of arbitrary characters than we do about the main character. Now there is a, about the dual protagonists, rather the two brothers, and their their backstory doesn't make you root for them. The brothers, there is a scene that is supposed to be emotionally impactful about the dead and him favoring one over the other and leaving his fortune to one instead of the other. Um, and then they button up that scene later uh, in the finale, but it isn't impactful enough to care. But there is that former basketball player, his backstory has more dramatic tension that makes the viewer care about him. So there should have been more time spent developing his arc and his character. Or even arbitrary characters that serve no purpose in this story. Like we stay a long time at a bodega owner. We, we spend a lot of time with him. He's irrelevant to the theme of the larger story. That's wasted time. That's Those scenes are wasted and don't drive the story at all. Number 10, the lighting. It's gloomy. The location shots are too dark and too shadowy. Number 11, the score is too loud and overpowering and domineering to the point that it tries to carry the load of the performances to drive emotion, which was irritating. Number 12, the concept. The concept isn't original. I think they were going for David Fincher's The Game, but the build up to the action fizzles because too much time is wasted on irrelevant plot, deadened storylines, and underdeveloped characters. That's, it, it doesn't work. And last but not least, number 13, the title. It has nothing to do with nothing. Take the night. No. Take the night is a masterclass in taking some distance and not having your hands in all the pots when you're filmmaking. I wouldn't recommend this film uh, to general audiences to pay, although I believe it is important to support uh, independent filmmakers and small budgeted films. It is important. But this is an experiment, it felt like. It felt like this was an experiment. In closing, Take the Night felt like a first year film school project or experiment chronicling what not to do. This film is a masterclass in bad filmmaking. I know that sounds harsh, but I want to keep it real. It's imperative not to dabble in all the pots if it's going to distort your objectivity and compromise your creativity because this could have been an intriguing story, but I think it just veered in the wrong direction and too many directions at that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this film to anyone other than those studying film or studying filmmaking. I don't know if you want to pay to see this film in the theater, but is it worth seeing to explore when it's on one of the platforms that you already have? <laughs> Thank you so much if you stuck around this long. I certainly appreciate you. Consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And until next time, peace. I'm good, I'm good.